Hello, welcome. My name's Erin and I'm replicating Mary Blair's concept art for Alice in Wonderland. I'm using the primary set of acrylic gouache. I also will be using the colors Opera, uh, Crimson and um, Luminous Red to replicate this piece of cool concept art that's done on a black background. So that's really the theme of today's painting is how to paint on um, dark backgrounds especially black. A lot of my art that I do in my personal practice is done on uh, black paper. So yeah, I really dig the effect. And I, <laughs> I screwed up my proportions. So there I am retaping. And I'm using something called froggy masking tape, which usually is amazing on any surface. But this surface, obviously, it, it ripped up a lot of the paper. So I, I suggest using washi tape. Um, my next tip has to do with uh, the order in which you lay down your paint. So I recommend always starting with your lightest colors. And the reason for this, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason for this is um, it's easier to cover up mistakes uh, with darker color over light. So when I go in with the red for these awnings, that red can cover up the rough edges of the white. Whereas if I did the red first, it would be harder to cover it up with the white paint. So yeah, starting with your lightest colors. Now here I'm mixing the blue of her dress and I'm using both primary cyan and the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine is a warmer blue and cyan is a cooler blue. Mixing them together with white, I get this really nice periwinkle, which is the color of Alice's dress. Um, now the whole thing about warm and cool blues, because in general blue is a cool color, uh, to know which is which, you just look at the blue that's closer to the red part of the color wheel. That would be the warmer blue. And then the cooler blue is closer to the green side of the, of the color wheel. So I'll put a little color wheel here up in the corner and you can see what I mean. And that should help with that confusion. It does get, it can get a little bit more confusing when you start to use cool or warm blues to mix to create purples and browns, but hopefully throughout this video I can help clarify that. So here's the luminous red, it's gorgeous, it's so bright, and I'm mixing it with crimson, which is a warm red as opposed to a cool red. And mixing those together, I get this extremely vibrant tomato red. Really lovely. So again, warm reds will be closer to the yellow part of the color wheel, wheel whereas cool reds will go uh, the opposite direction, away from yellow. And I could have painted the entire awning white and then painted the red over the white. <laughs> that actually would have been easier. But I wanted a little bit of the black to come through and that's what's really beautiful about painting on um, a black surface or really dark surfaces is it's kind of giving you depth, right? It actually can show through. Ooh, there's a little smudge there. So what I did is I just used clean water and my fingernail to scrape away the smudge. And I can do that because this paper is quite porous, right? It's fibrous. So I can sort of scratch up that fiber that had the smudge on it. Um, yeah, this is so fun to paint because Mary Blair uses really unusual colors and, and her images are often quite surreal, especially for Alice in Wonderland, right? Because the whole story is quite surreal. Um, so a lot of fun doing these. Uh, every section of this painting is um, painted in two or three coats uh, using gouache at that consistency that we always want gouache to be. Well, not always, but we really like it to be that nice creamy sort of melted ice cream consistency. Um, however, doing these little flowers, so this sort of, I'm essentially drawing with my paintbrush, right? And I'm using my little number one paintbrush. I added a little bit more water. So it's not, um, it's still nice and creamy and smooth, but it is slightly, um, wetter. It's, it's, it's been watered down enough that I can draw a little easier. It's a little smoother to do those uh, gestural, those lines. Uh, yeah, and then I added a bit of white to that mixture that I had, that luminous red, the crimson, adding a bit of white to get um, a higher value of the same color. And um, a higher value means, yeah, adding white. So we have a tint. If I added black, it would be a shade. So just a, a tint of that lovely tomato red to get the other parts of the plants. Next up is her skin tone. Uh, oh, no, I'm doing the center of the flowers, which is very similar to the skin tone. So I'm just adding a bit of um, primary yellow here to do these little, 
these little centers cute cute so with the skin tone of course skin tone really depends on the skin tone of your subject uh, going all the way from the spectrum is sort of a blue black into browns and then all the way up to peach tones and then there's yellow peach there's blue peachy tones and her skin tone is quite pink but i didn't add enough red to really match um, mary blair's work uh, mine is slightly more of a yellow peach so that's primary yellow plus the mixture that i had already of the crimson and the luminous red added some white and i believe i may have added just a tiny bit of black there just to just to tone it down a bit um, but either way, yeah, a couple coats of this and we get that nice skin tone and I loved painting the hand. <laughs> so cute. Hands are usually really tough, but in Mary Blair's style, it's just quick and uh, you get a nice, a nice gesture there. And with her hair, I put down a coat of white first because yellow uh, is very transparent and her hair is that yellowy blonde color. So I do a, a coat of white first, um, which which is necessary if you're if you're using um, yellow it really does help or else I'd have to do four or five coats to um, to get it to that opacity and what's great about using this paper this is a cold press um, watercolor paper it's very fibrous it's very absorbent so I don't really have to wait a long time to do the second coat I mean gouache dries so quickly anyway but um, it dries even faster it absorbs quicker with this type of paper and I do two coats of this yellow mixture on her hair and you'll see it's quite vibrant there it is second coat magically appears and little lips Mwah. kiss kiss and her eyeballs adorbs okay so <laughs> wow I'm still saying adorbs years later okay so primary magenta opera which is hot pink and some ultramarine blue to make this road originally the road was too I had too much ultramarine so it was a bit too dark too purple so I added a bit more opera to get this brighter pink color and for purples if you want to have a nice true bright vibrant purple you want to use that ultramarine that warm blue with primary magenta and magenta is like a cool ready pink so mixing those two together you'll get a really lovely vibrant purple um, if you want sort of um, I don't want to say muddy but maybe a less saturated purple um, then you would want to use uh, so closer to like an aubergine I guess you'd want to use the cyan with a, with a magenta um, you know you can you can experiment with a lot of different purples but yeah to get a nice true purple you want to mix the uh, the war the warm the warm blue with the cool red yeah yeah okay doing those little highlights on the road quick quick and now we're going to mix a brown so here we go so I've got the red there I've got my primary red I've got a bit of this sort of pinky mixture that I'm using um, and I'm adding a bit of the cyan so this is the cool blue right and so adding in the cool blue will create a and a bit of black don't forget the primary black um, this is going to create a different brown than if I use the ultramarine if I use the ultramarine brown it's going to have a bit more depth it'll or or sort of a, a less what, do, what would, how would you say this it's not as vibrant this has a bit more of an orangey kind of almost like a pumpkin-y orangey green color um, as opposed to if you use ultramarine it would be a little less vibrant so I wanted that that tree to look well to look like Mary Blair's painting and oh someone just texted me did you hear that ding I'm popular <laughs> it's like the only text I'll get today probably um, I'm adding black with some red and that brown mix mixture to create a darker uh, shade of the same color so that I can do the bark of the tree using my number one paintbrush getting some squiggles down to create this bark and uh, not really following the concept art here I'm sort of going with my own flow and really love this process really love just sort of doing this kind of um, mark making without thinking too much about what I'm putting down and you get this lovely effect free flow baby <laughs> um okay so next up is a, a greeny blue sort of a turquoise color so mixing cyan white and primary yellow great colors to mix together for uh yeah for great turquoises and pistachio 
but this was a bit too green. Um, her concept art shows it to be a little bit more uh, turquoise, more blue, and it actually suits the color, the color palette. Um, there's more harmony here, and that's because of this sort of blue green ties in with her dress. Um, there will be more of a green green in there, but it's a yellow green which ties in with her hair and like these colors, they seem so arbitrary, but really um, Mary Blair was a master at creating harmony using, you know, a, a quite um, a varied palette. And so this green, which I believe we call chartreuse, I'm always confused about this because I read about this weird Mandela effect, which I don't, <laughs> I'm not a believer really in the Mandela effect. Have any of you heard about this where like at some point our reality split into another dimension or split into like a new reality where things change like the Bernstein Bears and the color chartreuse? If you know what I'm talking about, make a comment <laughs> down below. So I'm not alone in this weirdness. Um, but anyway, this color is fantastic. I love this greeny yellow mixing together um, cyan, yellow, white, but a little bit of black to give it more of a green. Uh, yeah, awesome color. Really stands out on the black. And uh, now I'm going to create a, a slightly more of an orangey kind of color with the, the, we've got red, we've got yellow, and I'm doing the bird's little feet there. Cute. Another mistake, so just some water and a fingernail, a little scratch, and take that away. And now we're gonna do the eyeballs. I'm using my teeny brush to get little eyes in there. So weird. I love it. Mary Blair, man. I feel like we would have been, we would have been good buds. And there we go. Uh, I think this is it. It's time to reveal, take off the tape, which is my favorite part. Oh, we got to do the dots on the bird. Last, last touch, little speckles on the bird. Voila. So this tape, as I mentioned, it sucked. It did not, <laughs> it did not uh, protect my paper the way I wanted it to. So yeah, use washi tape. And if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Yay. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Have a good one.